Uh, let's bring in London-based Palestinian journalist Sharif Nashashibi and tell me what you make of the reaction, because it wasn't just Benjamin Netanyahu, it was the Israeli president as well, saying, look, we must have calm, these people will be caught, we condemn what happened, it is an act of terror. It's not as if Israel's standing back and sort of doing nothing at this point. I think in this case it can't because a toddler has been killed. So this is, this is something they would have to, to condemn. Um, but there are three things to look at here in terms of the reaction. Firstly, this is not an isolated incident. Um, Palestinians are subjected to Israeli settler violence on an almost daily basis. Um, the second thing is that the Israeli state fosters a sense of superiority and impunity that encourages these kind of attacks to happen. I mean, these, the human rights group, but Salem said that something like this was only a matter of time, given this, the sense of impunity. And the third thing is that the Israeli army um, doesn't act any differently. I mean, if, if it, it, it targets civilians. If you look at the last Gaza war, Israeli soldiers, their testimony said that, that they were told to deliberately target civilians, to shoot first and ask questions later. That is also terrorism. So the state is just as much culpable for the killing of Palestinian civilians as settlers. What does Israel need to do other than, I'm sure you would say this is the, probably the priority, other than stop building these settlements, perhaps demolish them? What, what else can it do to, to take some of the heat out of all of this? Israel has shown itself completely unwilling to do anything except expand the settlement project. Um, so what is necessary is international pressure on Israel. Um, to stop expanding settlements, to withdraw um, from the settlements that already exist. It has to come under pressure from governments, from the grassroots, from business, you know, including the, the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement, um, because it's clear that Israel on its own, um, left to its own devices, is not going to do what's necessary. In terms of the attacks on Palestinians, uh, Israeli settlers, but on Palestinian settlements, let, let's have a look at the figures. 2006, casualties 56, it then went up to a height in 2011. Now, the number of casualties has actually been falling since then. Is there a reason for that? It's difficult to say, but uh, the, the, the number of violent acts um, has not fallen. So... Uh, it, it, These are official figures, and it suggests that they have. Well, whose official figures are they? Now, they come from uh, one of the human rights groups, which has actually pulled all this together, and it says 2013, and I can't speak for last year, uh, 93 casualties the year before, 99 the year before that, 134. So it's, it's falling, but not enormously. Is there a reason that you can think for that? Uh, not, not that I can think of. I think settler violence has continued unabated. Israeli human rights groups in particular have been very vocal about the extent of settler violence, the growing extremism of settlers in the occupied territories. This is not surprising, given also that there are more and more settlers. The uh, Israeli government continues to expand them. The last announcement of settler expansion was just two days ago. So you, you're, this is illegal under inter international law. The Geneva Conventions forbids the transfer of, of a foreign population into occupied territory. And what is your experience as a reporter in, in trying to understand whether anybody who's behind this violence is actually, a, first of all, found, taken to a court of law, sentenced and perhaps incarcerated? Well, the Israeli human rights group, Yeshdin, said that of, the, uh, of all the, the complaints lodged by Palestinians to the Israelis, um, almost 93% go without any charge. So nothing is done in 93% of cases. And where there is a punishment of settlers, it's symbolic. It's a slap on the wrist. Uh, certainly, the Palestinians are subjected to, uh, to military courts, whereas the settlers are subjected to civilian courts. If you compare that to Palestinians, they can face jail of up to 20 years for throwing a stone. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for coming in and talking to Thank us on, on this.